Hello, everyone. My name is Shauna Sue from Crooked Door Studio in lovely Uptown Marysville, Ohio. And we're going to paint tonight. I'm super stoked. I love this painting. This is our uh, Longhorn, Longhorn Cow Bull. Longhorn. We'll just call it Longhorn. This is our Longhorn that we're going to paint tonight. Um, we are, we're recording tonight, so you can come back to the recording later. Um, remember as we go through this tonight, and I'll say this several times, this painting is just an inspiration. You take it wherever you want it to go. I'm going to show you the basics of, of accomplishing this painting, but if you want yellow in your background, you do that. You don't let me limit you. I'm just going to show you some tips and techniques and the way I'm going to step through this painting. So let's get started. Let's do our inventory before we put paint to canvas. I always like to make sure I have everything I need because I really don't like getting started painting and then I have to stop and find stuff. So, so let's talk about that real quick. Uh, since I know a lot of you aren't painting in a studio setting, some of you might be, you might have a studio at home, but if you're not painting in a studio setting, take a look around, make sure that you don't have anything super important that you would be really worried if you got paint on it. The paint that I'm using, I'm using acrylic paint. This is what I use, Blick Acrylic, student acrylic paint from Blick. You can order it online. I like it because it's really inexpensive. I can buy it by the bucket and it doesn't cost a lot of money, um, but it's still acrylic paint. And acrylic paint, when it dries, it turns to plastic essentially. So if you get it in fabric, it's real hard to get out, okay? So take a look around, make sure you don't have your prom dress, right? Make sure you don't have grandma's rug that you're standing on that you would be really concerned if you got paint on. Just survey the area real quick. It's real easy when I'm painting. I paint a lot like this with my brush. It's real easy for me to flick off the edge of the canvas and not even know it. So I always survey my space before I start. Also have my apron on. I have a paint shirt on too, but I have an apron on because I paint all the time. I have a real bad habit of wipe my hands on my, on, on myself, on my belly. I like to have an apron on just to catch that and to catch anything that might, might flip back at me. Okay, we've checked our surroundings and I apologize, it's gonna get loud here for a second because my husband just got home, three dogs, things are gonna get a little crazy. Sorry about that in advance. We're gonna keep going. Okay, so I've checked my surroundings. I have an apron on canvas. I'm painting horizontally this evening. I'm painting on a horizontal canvas. Um, the canvas that I have is a 16 by 20 stretched, wrapped, primed canvas. That means it's been primed with gesso, like a flat white paint. It's the way it is when you get it from the store. Decide now if you have a stretched canvas, decide now if you're going to paint your edges, right? Some, some artists do, some don't. I think it's okay regardless, either way you choose. It's okay either way you go with that. If you start painting your edges, you want to finish painting your edges. Don't leave naked spots someplace. Okay, that's just, that's just messy. Messy and unfinished, untidy. So if you're going to paint your edges, do it. If not, don't. Okay. All right, let's look at what I have down here. So I have a water cup. I just used a coffee cup that one of my friends got me that I absolutely love. Um, I shouldn't hold it like that because then I'd be tempted to drink it. Anywho, cool or cold water in my cup, in my water cup, never ever warm or hot, okay? Cool or cold. I will wash my brushes in warm and hot water, but while I'm painting with them, I want cool or cold, okay? I've got paper towels down here to blot my, to blot my stuff on to blot my brushes on. And then I'm gonna pick up my all my brushes I have. That's not a brush. Okay, three brushes tonight. I have my big, my big background brush. I like to use, I think this is a three quarter inch oval. You might see it called a filbert. I just, I love a big fat brush for the background. And you may think this brush looks really old. Oh, it is, it's seen some things. But I love old brushes because they're splayed out. Those bristles are, which means it's gonna hold a lot of paint. 
I love that. New brushes are still all tight and collapsed and it's hard to get enough paint down in them. So I have my big oval wash brush. I have a medium filbert. My medium filbert, he's the same shape as this big one. He's just smaller, that's all. Your medium brush, it might be flat. It might be a filbert. It might be an angle. As long as it's a medium brush, you're fine. And then I have a pointy brush, okay? And sometimes I'll use a pointy brush that's a lot bigger than this. As long as it comes to a really nice point, that's all we need. And for this painting, we don't have a lot of detail work. So whatever size pointy brush you have will be fine. When I'm not using those brushes, they live in the water cup. So I'm gonna go ahead and take them and put them down in here, leave them in my water cup. Okay. Something else that I, I like to keep, another implement, another painting implement I like to keep on me, Sharpie. I like, a, I like to keep a couple Sharpies. I probably have a black Sharpie in my other pocket. Oh, I do. I have silver, silver Sharpies, black Sharpies. I'm, I think every artist should sign their painting. I am really bad at signing with a brush. I've been painting since I was 10 years old. I have always been bad at signing with a brush. I'll sign mine with a Sharpie. Doesn't matter as long as my signature's on it. Okay, so Sharpie, paint pen, something like that. If you wanna sign with a brush, that is all you. But as long as I can remember, I'm bad at it. So I just saved myself the hassle. As long as my signature's on it, I'm good. So I've got that down there. I'll set that to the side. Now let's talk about our colors. Okay. I'm gonna sit down here, here we go. So I have a lot of white. We're gonna use a lot of white tonight. I have a nice bright yellow. That's just for my flowers, right? Whatever shade of yellow. And then I have some red, whatever shade of red. If yours is more crimson, if yours is more orange, that's fine. They're for the flowers. We'll do pretty things with them. And then my background for this painting, I've got phthalo blue and phthalo is P-H-T-H-A-L-O, phthalo. Phthalo blue and phthalo green. They're both really deep, dark, rich colors. A Little bit of paint is gonna go a long way for both of those. That's probably way too much paint, but I've got it. That way I don't have to refill halfway through, right? I have a variety of browns here tonight for our, for our Longhorn. I've got um, a brown, I think Blick is calling this burnt umber. Yeah, burnt umber. It's just a nice chocolate brown. I also have a brown that's kind of reddish, burnt sienna, right? And then I have that mustardy yellow, which is raw sienna. Uh, for those of you that watch Bob Ross, you would know this is yellow ochre, okay? But in the acrylic, in the blick acrylic world, for whatever reason, they call it raw sienna. And then black. Okay, so that's my paint palette. And I've had some of you ask me before, um, do, do I use, when I'm painting for myself, do I use a professional palette? Do I, I get that question sometimes? I use paper plates, especially if I'm using paint that is student paint, student grade paint. I'm not gonna worry about saving any of this. Once I'm done, I'm just gonna pitch the whole thing. So I just use a coated paper plate. So it's got like that little bit of wax coating on it so it doesn't soak down through the plate. But that's what I use. If I'm painting in oils or I'm using my good acrylic paints, I do have a palette that I'll use that I can seal it up and cover it and save my paint for later. But student grade paint, not too concerned about it. If you got paint from me, you probably have it in those little cups, those little condiment cups. As long as you snap that lid back on and keep the air out of that paint, it'll save for weeks, months, as long as you keep the air out of it. So you can go use it later. Okay, with that said, I believe we're ready to get started. So let's, um, give me just a moment here. Let me uh, collapse that. Okay, I had a little warning box on my computer. If you have your Zoom in gallery mode, you'll see another Shauna Sue and you'll see the picture that we're actually painting tonight, the Longhorn, the Longhorn cow. I don't know why I keep trying to call him something else. I already said we're just going to call him Longhorn, the Longhorn. Um, so let's look at that picture real quick. If you don't have access to it on Zoom, 
pull it up on your phone, pull it up somewhere so you can reference it real quick. We're gonna start by sketching the shape of our longhorn. We're gonna put his, um, oh my God, I almost called him antlers. I just felt all my farmer friends just gasp. They're not antlers, they're horns. We're gonna put the horns on and then we're gonna paint the background. And then we'll start really basic on our longhorn. And then we'll start to get some details. We'll get that fur on there, fur hair. We'll get the, we'll get his hairs, we'll get his bangs on there. And then we'll put a flower, a flower crown on at the end. Okay. And I'll show you a couple different ways to do flowers. Let's do this. Look at that, 715. Spot on. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna start with my big brush. So I'm gonna find my big brush. I'm gonna tap it around in my water cup a little bit. I wanna make sure it's clean. I wanna soften it up a little in case there's some dried paint left over in it. And then I'm gonna dry it off on my paper towel. I'm gonna push the water out of it. And I'm gonna start with some of this chocolate brown, this raw, raw umber. I'm gonna do some because I have a lick rolled. That is a really forgiving color. And I'll be able to cover it pretty easily if I make a mistake. Right? Oh, there are no mistakes though, right? Happy accidents. In case I have a wee happy accident, I know this is an easy, this is a forgiving color, much more forgiving than the phthalo green or phthalo blue. So um, this is something I see people do too. Make sure that when you pull paint, that you pull from the edge. I don't care if you pull from this side or this side, but for whatever reason, I see people dip right in the middle of the paint puddle. You don't wanna contaminate all that paint. You just wanna pull from the edge. So later, if I need some clean brown, I can pull from this side, okay. Anywho, I'm gonna take some brown and let's do some sketching. Here we go. So I'm gonna start with my, um, with my longhorn's head. Right. Easy enough. It's not straight. It's kind of it's kind of roundy. What we're going for here is a round, a rounded triangle. Okay. So I've got that rounded head up there, that rounded forehead. And then the sides. Don't worry about these double lines. That's just where I'm sketching. They come in and then rounded down here. Easy enough, right? Okay. Still sketching with brown. Give him shoulders. There we go. He's got shoulders now. I feel like he, this one needs to be over this way a little further. Okay. Now's the time. If he's too small, make him a little bigger. If he's too big, you can shrink him down a little. But again, that's why I'm sketching with just a little bit of this brown because it's pretty forgiving. Okay. We don't really need this right now, but I'm gonna put the nose on there where the nose is gonna belong. Nose is gonna be right here at the end of that, at the end of the face, at the end of the face, at the bottom of the face. And we'll talk more about the nose in a little bit, but it made me feel better to have it on there. And then I'm gonna sketch some, um, I'm gonna sketch the horns on there. And then we'll be able to rinse out and move into our background. So I'm gonna take a little more brown, my horns right here at the top of my triangle, at that top corner, I'm gonna go out and up and out and up. What do you think? Can we match that on this other side? 
out and up and out and up. Okay. I'm going to give you a minute to get to that point. And then we're going to rinse that big brush out and we're going to head into the background. So before we move into that background, I've said this brown is pretty forgiving. That's why I sketch with that. It's a pretty weak, transparent color for the most part. But because I don't want it to change my background color, I'm even though it's a weak color, I'm still going to check and make sure, and I just do this with my finger because I know this paint will wash off my body. You can do it with a paper towel if you'd rather. I'm gonna go around the edges here. I can see where I have some rolls of paint. I'm just gonna smooth those out a little. So if, as I'm painting my background, if I happen to get into the edge of my Longhorn, I'm not gonna pick up a chunk of wet paint. Because again, even though that brown is forgiving, I don't wanna pick up a chunk of it. Okay. Okay. Let's clean that big brush out. Tap, tap, tap in the bottom of the water cup. Knock that paint out. Tap, tap, tap. Dry it off on your paper towel. And as you're doing this, this is my reminder to you, don't stress. If you feel I'm going too fast, don't stress. Do what you can do. And then when you get to the point, if I'm too far ahead, you just put your things down and you wait until later and you go back to the recording, okay? All righty. So now I'm gonna paint my background. And I've said, the phthalo green and phthalo blue are very powerful colors. A little bit is gonna go a long way. And I want my background to be kind of light and airy. So I'm gonna use a lot of white and a little bit of green and a little bit of blue. I'm not going to mix those ahead of time. I'm gonna let the mixing happen on my canvas. And the beauty of this is Sometimes it might be a little more blue. Sometimes it might be a little more green. Sometimes it might be lighter, sometimes darker. That's okay. That makes things interesting. Instead of one solid um, turquoise color. I wanna be able to play in it a little bit and see different shades of turquoise. I also know acrylic paint blends while it's wet. Once it's dry, it will not blend. Depending on the environment you're in, if it's really humid or really cold in your house, the paint may not dry as fast or it may dry really fast. So to be sure that I get the blend the way I want it, I'm not gonna jump around my canvas. I'm gonna start, I usually start top left corner when I'm painting a background and I'll come down this way and then I'll work my way around that way. That way, wherever I'm working in that moment, I can blend it and get it the way I want it before I move on. And you remember how I said, make sure you pull in the edge of your paint. This is really important or we're gonna end up wasting paint. If I pull in the edge of my white here down the road, I'll be able to pull clean white from the other side when I get into the, into the Longhorn and I need it for my browns, okay? So a lot of white, don't be stingy, load that brush up. A lot of white, little green, little blue. And I'm gonna start up here and I'm gonna go back and forth and back and forth. At this point, you need to decide, are you going to paint your edges? If you are, now's the time. Get up there, paint that top corner. It's easier to do it now while you have that color on your brush. But our goal right now is to paint everything except our longhorn.
and I don't have to be super neat around him. So if I get on top of him a little bit, that's okay. I'm not worried about that. But I want to keep the general outline there. You can see how uh, how messy I am here, right? Painting around his face and up around his his horns. Not worried about it. I'm really not. The reason I've sketched him on there is because that's the hardest part of the painting, right? Um, to make sure we have our longhorn on there the way we want him. And then it doesn't do me any good to paint this all background if I'm just gonna cover it up with cow, right? So that's why I have his general shape on there. All right. And my brush stroke, make sure you're holding your brush the way you hold your pencil. And make sure you're using both sides of your brush. Right? And my brush stroke, it's almost like an infinity symbol, but I'm picking up on the curves. Big X's, I suppose. And I apologize if you haven't painted with me before, I will randomly bust into song. Sorry about that. You can't hear it. You probably can't hear it, but I do have my music on behind me. Not that that would keep me from singing anyway. Okay, so let's keep going. Paint that whole background. Go ahead and finish this down here while this is wet. For my more advanced students, if you wanted to, you would want to make down toward the bottom of your canvas a little bit darker. That'll help weight your painting down a little bit and then a little brighter, a little, little more white up high. You don't have to. But that's one of those extra little, extra little things you could do. And as you're painting your background, you can blend it all into where it's all one color. I don't do that though. I love to see all my individual brush strokes. And you can see how I've gone from blue into greeny turquoise, back into blue, back into turquoise. I like that. I like how it varies quite a bit. I'm going to get really light up here in this top corner. I said that and then I just grabbed a big old chunk of dark paint. It's okay. While it's wet, it blends. So while it's wet, I can add some more white. And don't forget your edges. If you're painting your edges, I'm not saying you have to, but if you are painting your edges, you want to do it now while you have that color on your brush.
Okay, I hope y'all are taking a moment to breathe. Don't take this super serious, right? This is fun, it's supposed to be fun. We're just relaxing tonight. We're gonna let whatever happens tonight happen. I will say this is so much better if you don't try to control the paint, you just let it happen. It may not do what you want it to do, but that's okay. I like to tell people that's probably 75% of being an artist, just letting whatever's gonna happen, happen. Because sometimes the harder you try to control it, the more sideways it goes. So we just let it happen, okay? I'm gonna give you a few minutes, let you get your background done. When you're done, go ahead and rinse that brush out. We're gonna need it for the next step. Um, some people ask, when is a good time to get clean water? Not now, not now. Your water may be all kinds of funky colors right now. Not worried about it because we're going to use a really, really dark brown black next. Doesn't matter if I have dirty water. When we get into uh, the flowers at the end, that's when you might be concerned about clean water. Okay. And uh, we talk also about, um, blow dryers. I don't know that we're going to need a blow dryer tonight. You watch, I'm going to be a fibber and halfway through, I'm going to be like, blow dryer. I don't think we're going to need a blow dryer tonight. All right. I'm going to give you a few minutes to get that background done. I'm going to go check on the dogs that are really, really quiet right now. And when you have three, they should never be quiet. So you guys keep going. I'll be back in a minute and we'll be ready to move on to our Longhorn. Okay. They're all being so good. Makes me wonder what they've done. Like when your kids are super duper quiet, you walk in the room and you're like, what have you been doing? And they're like, nothing. You know, they've been doing something. Weird. Anywho. Okay. So let's get ready and we're gonna paint our, our Longhorn really, really dark, okay? Do you remember how we went around and made sure the brown, made sure we didn't have any big chunks of wet brown paint? We're gonna do kind of the same thing with that blue green, with that background. I just don't wanna drag through it and change, change things that I'm moving forward. So I'm just going around the perimeter with my with my finger, making sure I don't have any big globs, no big paint boogers. There we go. Okay, let's paint the face, not the nose. Let's paint the face, that head, not the horns, not the nose and the body nice and dark. We're gonna put hair, we're gonna put fur all over it, but because a lot of our paint, a lot of our colors are really transparent, we wanna get a nice dark base for those colors to play on. So we wanna get that nice dark base under. So I'm not really concerned about what this looks like, it's just adding a nice dark undertone that we can lay that hair on later. So I'm gonna use my big brush. And I think I might just use black. 
let's just use some black. So I'm going to go ahead and paint that head in with black. Not the nose, though. And this can be a little, a little messy, right? Because we're going to have hair that comes out and covers things. But we need a nice, a nice dark base here. Okay, and then the neck or the chest, I guess we could call it. Neck, chest, body. Just big brush, nice and dark color. I'm using black. You could use black and brown if you wanted. I just want it to be dark under there. Okay. Rounding his head out a little. There we go. Now make sure as you do this, you're not leaving big chunks of paint, right? We want to smooth those paint boogers out. You have too much paint on your brush, wipe it off, go back with a dry brush, smooth those paint boogers out. Okay. And then I think at this point, once I have him painted dark, I'm gonna be done with my big brush. I'm gonna go ahead and pop that in my in my water cup. Cardinal sin, you can't see over here, but I just put my my beverage right beside my water cup, right beside my paint cup. Not good. It's not smart. How many times have I drank paint water? Okay, while you guys are finishing up painting your bowl, let me tell you a story because this is what I do. So years and years and years ago. Um, when I first opened the studio, so I've been at the studio almost nine years, I think. I've had my studio open. I think so. Um, so I was painting. I was, it was like a Saturday morning by myself. I was working on some paintings. So I had my coffee and I had a little bit of magic in my coffee, I had a little bit of Baileys in my coffee. Okay, I had a lot of Baileys in my coffee, but I was painting. I was having a good time, a little bit of Baileys in there. And I set my, I set my coffee cup down right beside where I was painting and I finished painting and I was like, huh, that looks really good. I was super pleased with myself with what I had just painted. And I took that brush and I went boop right in my coffee cup that had my Baileys in it. And I saw it in slow motion as it happened. And in my brain, I said, I'm not wasting that coffee, even though I just put my paintbrush in it. So I picked up my, I picked up my paintbrush nice and nice and easy. Nice and easy. So I didn't knock any paint off of it. And I laid it over to the side and I looked down in my cup and I went, there's just a little blue in there. It's fine. And I drank it because I'm not wasteful. I don't recommend that. It's probably why I'm a little kooky. I've drank a lot of paint water in my life, a lot of paint coffee. Um, anywho. So I guess I say all of that to say, make sure you're setting your beverage away from your, your paint cup. I do it every time. I've been painting for 38 years. Set them side by side, not smart. Okay, let's go ahead now. Setting it back here this time. Let's go ahead now and paint our, um, our horns, okay? I'm gonna use a smaller brush. You can decide if you wanna use your pointy brush, depending on how big your pointy brush is, or if you wanna use your medium brush, you can use your medium brush and paint with it this way, as opposed to this way, right? Turn it this way and shush with it. 
But my medium brush, I think is a little, right? He's seen better days. So I'm probably gonna use my pointy brush. I am gonna go ahead and paint those horns. I think I'm gonna go ahead and paint those black. I'm using my pointy brush, but I have a big pointy brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint those black. And then I'm gonna move fast because I know acrylic paint blends while it's wet. Once it's dry, it will not blend. I wanna do some highlighting on those horns. So I have to do that while the black is wet, okay? So you may feel like I'm moving fast, but I'm doing that for a reason because if I wait too long, the black horns will be dry and I'll just lay white on top. I won't be blending white in, okay? So let's go ahead and paint those. Paint those horns in. And I'm using my pointy brush with just black. And that's nice because that black will cover that background color. Making sure I got my shape the way I want it. Okay, once I have the shape the way I want it, I'm gonna rinse that brush out and I'm probably gonna rinse it out a couple times. Rinse it out, dry it off. I'm gonna take some white and I'm gonna get close so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna take some white and I want my highlight to be along the top of that horn. So I'm using little, Choo, 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 shushing brush strokes. Choo, 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 shushing brush strokes. Okay. Starting at the top and working my way down. I'm gonna wipe that brush off or clean it out, get clean white, do it again. Back to, back to the top. See that time it's a lot lighter. And I can come right into the right into the head because I'm gonna cover that with um with hair. I might go again. I feel like maybe this wants to be a little whiter right here. So I'm gonna clean that brush off again, get some clean white, go one more time. Starting at the top of the horn, every time I have clean white. There we go. So I'm leaving that black down at the bottom but I've got that nice bright white at the top. That gives us some dimension there. Okay, let's head over to the other one and do the same thing. Clean that brush out, paint that horn black, and then bring white on top, little shushy brush strokes. There we go, black first. And I feel like my, my horns are uneven. I'm okay with that. There are very few things in nature that are straight, 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 right? So my horns are just gonna be a little, a little uneven. I'm okay with that. Maybe he, uh, Maybe he bumped into the barn really hard on that side. That's why that horn's a little off. Who knows? You need to give him a back story. 
Okay, got my black on there. Clean my brush out. Clean white. Right along the top, little shushy brush strokes. Wipe my brush off and go again. If you're having a hard time and it's just not getting light enough with that white, pause for a minute, take a little break, let that black dry a little bit, and then clean your brush out, get clean white, go back in. <laughs> oh, stand by. You guys keep working on your, keep working on your horns. Okay, we'll see how this goes. I just let the yahoos in. Okay, I'm gonna clean that out and go one more time on that horn. Okay, got our horns on there. So we're gonna get ready next and move on to our nose. And I think I'm probably gonna use that medium brush for the nose. Okay. All right, and the nose color can be a little bit of a challenge, but we're gonna, we're gonna play, right? So I have my medium brush. You can use your little brush if you want. My nose color is a little bit of white, little bit of red, little bit of that reddish brown. Let's give this a whirl. And I don't normally mix ahead of time, but I'm gonna do some mixing here on my plate to see if I can get a color I like. So medium brush, I've cleaned it out, dried it off. I'm gonna take some white, some of that reddish brown, do a little mix. Ooh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I wanna pink it up. I might add a little bit of red to it. You could just use white and red if you wanted. That would be okay. You'd have a pink, a pink cow nose. That would be okay. But I like this color that's a warmer pink. So white, little reddish brown, little red. And let's paint our snows on there. Oh, I got into a little black. That's okay. And do you see the shape of my nose? It's curved at the top, kind of like a, like a smile. It's a little curved at the sides, and then it's kind of a smile at the bottom. It's very uneven. I'm gonna try to even it up here. I'm gonna get in front of it to try to even it up. Sorry, my, my apologies, I'm right in front of you. Here we go. Okay.
I don't know if you can hear it, but the yahoos are, are yahooing in here, running like crazy people. Okay. Ooh, it's a good color. I think I want to take a little more white, a little more red. I'm going to pinken that up a little bit. Oh, I like that. I got a little pinker. Okay. So do you remember what I said? Acrylic paint blends while it's wet. Okay. I'm gonna take that medium brush and clean it out. Dry it off. I'm gonna take some white and I'm gonna do a little bit of contouring with that. I'm gonna go around, around the nostrils, around the nostril area where it's gonna be. So my nose is wet. That is way too white. That's okay. Because my nose is still wet, I can blend that in. Doing a little, a little contouring. Giving it a little shape. I might even add a little bit of reddish brown back to my brush and darken this bottom lip a little. You could really spend a lot of time on this, on this nose if you wanted. And if you don't like your nose, you just put, you put hair all over it. It'll be fine. This shape here is a little weird for me. Fix that. Okay. What I don't want is just a, a flat pink, um, just a flat pink rectangle. I want to add a little roundiness to it. I want to contour it a little bit. And when I say contour, all I mean is just taking that brush and smoothing around the edges a little. I added a little more reddish brown to my brush. I'm going to play down here at the bottom a little bit. Maybe I can curve those edges in. Maybe I take a little more white across the top. It's really whatever you feel. What does your, I'm channeling my Bob now. What does your cow nose look like in your world? That's fun. Okay, and I'm gonna get ready and make it real weird for us now. Because if you look at the original painting, we need to put the, the split there. We need to put like the, the mouth split and the nostrils and it's gonna look like an angry face and that's okay. It'll be fine, but we gotta do it. So I'm gonna move to my pointy brush while that's still wet because I want to kind of blend a little. And what does my, what does my nose look like? My nostrils are angled in this way. They're parentheses, but they're angled in at the bottom a little. And then my mouth goes down and up and down. I'm gonna have a nostril angled in angled in. And now it looks like I have an angry face on my cow. Angry face on my cow nose. And I'm just going to play a little. I got a little more reddish brown on that brush. It's kind of cleaning up my nostrils a little. Again, you could spend a lot of time on this part of the painting. 
or you could really spend not a lot of time at all on it. It's entirely up to you. I'm gonna take a little bit of black and clean the, clean the edges up a little. Okay. All right, take another minute on that nose. I apologize, I'm gonna get in front of it again and straighten it up a little. I think I need to let it dry a little bit because it's starting to get muddy. Let it dry a little bit and then I could go in and add a little more of that, that reddish brown color. I feel like the more I do, I'm just making it an angrier face. So silly. Oh. All right, friends, I think it is time to move on to hair. I say that and then I just keep painting my, painting my cow face, painting my cow nose. Okay. I guess I just keep going around it with a little bit of black, just kind of contouring it a little. Just going around the edge. Okay, we'll be done with that. Cause we could spend a lot of time on that, on that cow nose. Okay, tis time, tis time for hair. Remember, just putting this out there, if at any point you start to get stressed out, put your things down, walk away, take a little breather, come back to the recording later, okay? I keep saying I'm done with the nose and I just keep going back in. We needed to clean that nostril up a little. You know what it's like when you need to clean your nostril, right? There we go. Okay. I'm gonna go back to my big brush. Some of you may have a fan brush that you wanna play with this next step. Um, give me just a moment. Let me grab my fan brush out of my bag. So let's, let's give everybody a chance to catch up on the nose. Let's talk a little about fan brushes. This is giving that black an extra minute to dry because I have a, a a wet spot of black right there in the middle. We'll just give it another minute. So a uh, fan brush, you, you may use a fan brush for this part, you may not. You can use, people see a fan brush and they immediately think they're gonna use the fan brush this way, right? They're gonna use it this way. I like to turn my fan brush for something like this and use it skinny ways like this and you think well why wouldn't you just use why wouldn't you just use a pointy brush right if you're trying to accomplish this look because there are so many bristles there that are all kind of if I drag down I'm going to get this really cool um, kind of broken scraggly line if I use my pointy brush I'm going to get a, a pretty straight clean line this is gonna give me a scraggly line. Now, you can use it this way if you want, but for something like this, I like to use it this way and get those scraggly, those scraggly lines that look more like hair. Um, 
while we're talking about fan brushes, there are so many different kinds of fan brushes out there. I really like these. If you want to know where I get my, my fan brushes, I get them from Michaels. Um, this is a, I don't see the name on it. If you wanted to know where I get my fan brushes, I could, uh, I could send you the link. Artist Loft. Anyway, I like these because all fan brushes are different. And usually fan brushes that you get, the bristles are really soft. Not a fan of those. Some people, Artist Loft, thanks, Lynn. Some of those, um, they're, they're way, way soft. They don't do what I need them to do. I guess I'm just an aggressive painter. I love these fan brushes because the bristles are really coarse and... I don't know, they just, they splay out better. Sometimes when you're painting with a fan brush, if you're painting happy little trees, if you have a fan brush that the bristles are too soft, they like turn into fingers and you wind up getting like polka dots. These are more likely because it's a coarse bristle, they're more likely to stay fanned out and not chunk and turn into fingers and polka dots. Anywho, there's that. But I'm not even gonna use my fan brush. I said all of that just to say, I'm not gonna use it. But if you have one, play with it, do it, have fun. So as we put the hair on there, we're gonna put the hair on, we're gonna start, we're gonna put the chest on first and this is gonna be a good practice for us. And then we'll move up to the head. My hair, I'm gonna drag down and I'm gonna use my darker colors first. And then I can start to add lighter colors, but let's get our darker colors first. So I'm gonna use my, my big brush and I'm gonna use that big brush skinny ways. And when I say skinny ways, I mean this way, just the way I talked about that fan brush. I'm gonna use it this way. And I'm gonna load it up with paint. I'm gonna start with the brown. My, my brown and my reddish brown, I'm gonna use both of those. And I'm gonna start down here at the bottom and I'm dragging down, 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 down. Maybe some of it goes outside the, goes outside the cow. Is it all straight? Is some of it gonna be a little curly? It's gonna have a little, little fun texture to it. That's up to you. Okay, darker colors first. You can leave some of that black show through if you want. The trick here, not that there's a trick to any of this, but the trick here, sorry, someone just hit the, hit my uh, tripod. Yay who's, what are you gonna do? The trick here is to not go over the same brush stroke 15 times and just kill it. Don't do that. Put a brush stroke down and walk away. Be okay with whatever happens there. I don't feel the need to continue to go back over it because you're gonna lose, if you do, you're gonna lose all that cool texture that you're working on building. Okay. Okay, so I want the chest to stay pretty dark. I don't wanna, I don't want a lot of light down in there because it would be in shadow under the head, right? Under the chin. And you get right up under the, right up under that chin. There we go. And what if I start to add some of that yellow, that, um, that uh, raw sienna? I keep wanting to call it yellow ochre because that's what Bob calls it. But what if I lay in some of that? How does that look? Just a little bit, just enough to add some highlights down in there. And my brush strokes are as long as the hair should be. So I'm pulling like actual length. 
So make sure your brush strokes, make sure you're not pulling too long. Make sure you're not pulling too short or he'll look like he's had a chopped hairdo. And I'm not really, I'm not adding any white yet. I might add some white on the face, but I'm not adding white yet because I want that chest to be a little darker. Okay. And again, make sure some of that hair is hanging out, right? Maybe he's in the wind. Maybe we need some of it to be fluffy. Let's head up to the head up to the head. Let's go up to the head. Back to the dark colors first. Okay. And most of my brush strokes are going to come from from here. That's how we're going to it looks like I just gave him bangs like his mom cut his hair. But that's how my brush strokes are going to fall. They're going to be pretty straight up and down in the middle. And as I go to the right, I'm gonna drag them over to the right. And as I move to the left, I'm gonna curve them over to the left. Okay, and I'm just using those browns right now. I'm going right up to the top of his head. Not super concerned about that area because I'm gonna put flowers there. And when we get to the nose, we're gonna pull down around the nose, down and curve it around. Now, as you start, remember we said darker first, as you start to add lighter, let's add some of that yellow. I'm not cleaning my brush out. But I'm going to start to blend in a little bit of that, that mustardy yellow, that yellow ochre slash raw sienna color. Let's put a little bit of that on there. Oh, this is fun. And then I want to give his face a little dimension. It's a little flat right now. I want to make it look like his nose is coming forward a little. So with my dirty brush, I'm going to add a little more of that yellow, that mustardy yellow color, and a tiny bit of white, just a little bit, right here on top of his nose. So I can brighten that up a little bit. and pull that forward a little by lightening it up. I'm not using very much white at all. Just a little bit to frame that nose. Oh, so fun. Now, if you find that things are starting to get a little a little murky, a little muddy, which that happens, let it dry or go to the blow dryer, come back and then put some more color over top of it. If you overwork it, it's things are gonna start to get weird. So I'm getting to the point, I'm gonna have to stop here in a second or things are gonna start to get murky for me. Things are gonna start to get muddy and all run together. But I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to add a little yellow, tiny bit of white right here around the, around the nose. And that's going to help separate the head a little bit from the body. That sounded weird. But y'all know what I mean. I want to pull that face forward. And I'm going to have to stop because it's going to start getting, getting super muddy there. Okay, I'm gonna give you, oh, nope, I'm gonna do one more thing. While I have that color on my brush, we gotta put ears on there, right? They have ears. So dark colors first, so browns, 
and the ears are just little little bumps a little bump right up there right where the the horns meet the head so dark colors first and then little yellow little white right on top So we'll take a few minutes, let everybody get to that spot, and then we'll be ready to talk flowers. Oh, that's fun. He's so stinking cute. So how about we take a few minutes, right? We're gonna talk flowers next. Flower, his uh, flower crown on his head, her head, his head, who knows? Um, I don't know, that's a, that's a question. Somebody needs to answer that for me. Lynn, I feel like you're the one. Do long horns have, do long horn, do girls have horns? Can girls have horns? Ponder that. We'll get to that, that answer here in a minute. Now's the time too. You're gonna wanna think about what color flowers you want. You might rinse your water out, get clean water, because I want some white daisies up there. So I'm gonna want some clean water for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, mute for just a minute. I'm gonna um, take a little stroll. I'll be back in a minute and we'll be ready for, for flowers. And Lynn, I'm anxiously awaiting the answer to the, to the horns question. Do girl, do girl longhorns have horns? Would they be longhorns? I don't know. Anywho, all right, I'm gonna mute. I'll be back in just a minute. So clean water, um, flower colors, and we'll be ready. Okay, I do believe it's time for flowers. So I'm gonna show you a couple a couple different flower techniques for, for what we have going on up there. I'm gonna do some little daisies. I'm gonna do my favorite little wheat looking flowers, little wheat grasses. Um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. So make sure you have your flower colors. Maybe some clean water. Clean white for sure. Okay. So if I'm painting daisies, a daisy type flower, I'm gonna pick the brush that I want that gives me the outside edge of the petal that I want. So I can use my pointy brush and that's gonna give me really pointy, pointy spiky flowers. I can use, I'm probably gonna use that medium brush, my medium filbert, because it's gonna make the ends of my petals very round. But anytime I do flowers, my petals, I'll start at the outside and pull into the middle. Even when I do my, my little wheatgrass looking flower things, it'll make sense in a minute. I'll start outside and pull in. If you start in the middle and pull out, your flowers will have um, really um, faded furry edges. 
And I want the edges of my flowers, my petals to have very distinct, distinct petals. Okay, stay with me. This will this will all make sense. So I'm gonna put some flowers on there and then I'll put some greenery in. But I like to put my flowers on first because I don't want the greenery first and I don't want the greenery to determine where I'm gonna place things. My flowers are the focal point. So I wanna put them just where I want them. And then I can fill in with greenery, fill in maybe with smaller flowers, but start with your big pivotal pieces first. Okay. So if I'm gonna put a daisy on there, I'm gonna do everything in white and then I'm gonna put yellow centers in. So the way I do daisy flowers, I put the center, so I know where I'm drawing my petals to. So center, petals, and then I can go back and fix the center. Stay with me, this will all make sense. So I am using white and I'm using a lot of paint. I'm using that medium, um, my medium filbert. You can use a medium flat, you can use a medium angle. I'm gonna use it skinny ways. So let me get close. So you can see what I'm doing and I wanna make sure this is dry up here. I need a middle so I know where I'm pulling to. That's just white. I'll put yellow on it when I, when I clean it up. But for my daisy flowers, I'm gonna do a plus. So outside pull in, outside pull in, down from the top, up from the bottom. Then I can fill in, petal there, 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 and there. And then I'm gonna use another brush so I don't have to clean this one out. And put a little bit of yellow, bloop, bloop, bloop. Tap, 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 right in the middle. Okay, let's do another one of those. Maybe I want one, maybe I want one up here. Center, so I know where I'm pulling to. And then I'm gonna go one, it's a plus, two, two. And I can fill in from the outside, pull in. This guy, these, these petals aren't even touching the middle. I'm okay with that because I can take my brush with my color, my little bit of yellow here, and fix it. Okay. Let's see, what if I wanted to do half a flower so you're not looking at it straight on, so you're looking at it kind of from the side, it's the same, same kind of thing. Watch this. So I'm gonna have my middle so I know where I'm pulling to. And then I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put a mustache on or a frown. So outside in, one, two, straight up from the bottom. And then in between those gaps. And I can put a little, a little yellow there. How pretty is that? And it's a flower from the side. It's fun. Now I can use a smaller brush and do the same thing. I'm gonna use my pointy brush. I think I need some little, uh, some little pink flowers. So white, a little bit of red. I want a real pale pink. So I'm gonna use my pointy brush with some pink. And what if I do little clusters? So what if I have a cluster of three up here? So one, two, three, and same thing, pull in like a plus. 
and then diagonal. Yes, we're making an asterisk, right? And if I add a little bit of white, a little more white to this one, so I have some differentiation. And they're running into each other and I'm okay with that. They're allowed to touch. We'll do a third one over here. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow and fix my centers. So again, center, petals, center. So let's see, what do I need now? I feel like I need a couple more over here. I keep stepping back and, and evaluating what I have. I'll do a. I'm going to do one down here, center, petals like a plus, and an X. Oops. And then I think I want one up here. My theory is more, the more flowers, the better. But for the interest of time, I think I'm going to stop with these. I'll show you how to do some, some greenery, some grasses. Got a yahoo at the door, stand by. Come on in, yahoo. Come on. Honey. Sugar. Okay, so now I have a clump of flowers up there. I'm gonna put some greenery in. And my greenery, I like to use my pointy brush, phthalo green, bright yellow, and a little bit of white. And that gives me this gorgeous limey color. If you just use phthalo green and white, it's a little minty. So it's whatever, whatever direction you wanna go. But to finish out my flower crown, I'm gonna do, let's see, one that comes out this way and maybe something that comes out that way. Some greenery there. Oh, more green, yellow, green, yellow, white. I feel like I need something comes out of there. Maybe up here. Trying to decide if I want to go up, maybe just a little, just a little up. Okay. And then I'm going to take some of these green, yellow, white. And I'm using my pointy brush. And I'm going to, everything pulls in, remember, pull in from the end. And then you're gonna make these that are offset. So from the left, down a little to the right, down a little to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. Let's do that again. Green, yellow, white. Let's do one up here. Okay. So if it goes out that way, I'll go out to the end, pull straight in from the left, from the right, from the left, from the right. And you see, I just keep rotating my painting because these are easiest for me if they're pointing straight up and down because that's how my brain works. Maybe this one has a little more white to it. Maybe these aren't green at all. Maybe these are yellow. Maybe you don't have these. It's your painting, right? It's whatever you want it to be. Some yellow and white here. That's pretty. That crown of flowers. Now I have some little gaps up here. I feel like I need 
I need some purple flowers, some little tiny purple daisies. I'm gonna do it with my pointy brush. I'm gonna mix some red, some blue, some white. I'll get some little, little purple dudes up here. And since these are so tiny, I'm gonna use the other end of my brush, the handle to give myself the little center. Oop. I'm gonna go, well, it's the same like the others, right? It's a plus and an X. Then I think these guys will just have little white, little white centers. That's cute. Maybe another one right there. When I get to little tiny flowers like this, I like to think of them in clusters. So there's, there's rarely ever just one. I like to have a couple of them in there. Like I need one over there to balance it out. Right, right here, boop. And maybe that's it. Maybe, maybe that's it. So this is one of those things you can just keep going, keep going, keep playing, have all kinds of fun with it. But I think I've shown you tonight all I can show you when it comes to this painting. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and sign off for the evening. So remember when you're done, I think it's important for you to sign your painting. I know a lot of people don't like to, but at least take a Sharpie and write your name on the back of it the name and the, your name and the year. If you're gonna write it on the back, make sure you write it on the wood frame. Don't write it on the canvas in the middle because it could bleed through. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and sign on the front, I think. And I've got a little gold Sharpie here. So I'm gonna sign down here. Let's see my signature, maybe down in this corner. My signature is S, S, and a little blah, blah, blah for my last name. And then I always do a little tick and a 23, so I know what year. And those uh, metallic Sharpies are lovely. So I've got it signed down there and it's not real, real crazy obvious. So I do believe that's it for the night. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. This has been a lot of fun. I needed this. And stay tuned. I'll have the May calendar posted eventually. <laughs> eventually, since May is coming up on Monday. Um, but stay tuned, we'll have the May, uh, there will be a virtual in May. Um, it'll probably be Memorial Weekend. I try to do these the last Saturday of the month. So stay tuned, it will happen. It will, it will, the May calendar will happen soon. Um, but just keep an eye on uh, crookedorstudio.net. So thank you so much for joining me tonight. I hope you guys have a lovely evening and watch for the recording. If you're not done here in about five, 10 minutes, I will post it up on uh, in the event page as a comment. All right. Thank you. You guys have a lovely evening. Night.